What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. For today's video, we're going to be checking out the Transformers Legacy Evolution War Dawn 2-pack. Inside this set is one Dion and one Cybertronian Aerial, and I guess in some ways, it's kind of a cool continuation to the A Heroes Born set, which was released around about this time last year. That came with Orion Pax and Alpha Trion, and both of these sets are based on the same story, and in some ways, this too is also an origin set, because Aerial, for those of you who don't know, is a leader one before she was a leader one. You know, it's very similar to Orion Pax into Optimus Prime. So I guess that's kind of cool. I understand that the only characters we would really need to complete the War Dawn episode now would be the Aerial Bots. So I am hoping that we get those sooner rather than later. But going to be real with you guys, haven't been too excited to get this set in hand, mainly because of the molds they're using for some of these figures. I mean, I don't mind too much the cut mold, but the Legacy RC mold that they've used for Aerial does kind of suck. But anyways, we check out the box art. This does look fantastic. It's probably the best thing about the set, not going to lie. And I want you guys to take note of not only what they're holding but the facial expression we can see here for Dion because even here for this side the artwork depicts him as being incredibly expressive and then you come around here to the back of the box and what on earth happened look at him it's just so generic so dead looking I mean damn that is one of the worst face sculpts I think I have ever seen on a Transformers figure but surprisingly despite this being based on Legacy RC Ariel doesn't look too bad and as we take a look here at the top of the box we get a few easter eggs based on the episode such as Shockwave, Megatron and Sound wave flying down but unfortunately no sign whatsoever of the aerial bots so i imagine they're not coming anytime soon hasbro to be fair i'd love them to be our next combiner but anyway let's get these two out here and see how they stack up alongside their original molds as well as the a hero is born set so to kickstart this review off, we're first of all going to be checking out Dion, which is a cup retool, which I think works perfectly for robot mode, not so much for vehicle mode. I think if they were trying to nail the accuracy overall, they maybe should have looked into retooling a Voyager or maybe giving us a brand new sculpt. But considering this guy is pretty much unheard of, I imagine it was probably not worth their while. But despite that, they have retooled a lot on this figure. So the head is brand new, the chest is brand new, the biceps downwards are completely brand new, the crotch is brand new, as so are the shins. And I do believe believe the entire back has been modified so we get this brand new section slap bang and center and these two outer pieces are removable you can combine them and turn them into a larger blaster which yeah I thought was kind of cool and they do help to fill out the back of the truck when in vehicle mode so yeah it's not a bad looking figure but as I said beforehand that is a terrible looking face sculpt I mean come on it's just so generic basic and boring looking I mean damn I'm pretty certain they could have easily spiced this up with maybe even a bit of blue paint for the eyes because he does quite literally look dead and it's because the light piping is so difficult to get to that unless you have literally your phone right underneath it he does look like he's switched off so yeah that's a bit of a shame and they've still packaged the same gun that we saw with cup and the energon dispenser now why this is i have no idea i imagine it's just on the mold at this point but i would have much rather had seen these two weapons gone and instead they have given us an energon cube much like what was shown on the front of the box they could have easily taken the energon cube from say the centurion drone pack that was released in 2020 and i think collectors would have much preferred that and another thing which is worth bearing in mind is there are a few QC issues with this figure so when I took this out of the box it did come in a shipper box I heard something rattling around in the main package and it was the arms they are so loose they're probably the loosest they have ever been so that is definitely something to watch out for absolute pain in the ass as far as transformation goes and I think they've given me two left shins so as you guys can see this section is on the same side on both sides which it shouldn't be this piece should really be here so unfortunately this connection doesn't quite quite secure in bot mode which yeah it does kind of suck but that is pretty much Dion so let's check out Ariel and it's going to be kind of crazy to say, but I think this might just be my favourite out of the set, which I wasn't expecting to say at all, considering that she is based on that Legacy RC mould, but this is a really nicely done looking figure, and I do think it's probably the best version of this mould that we've ever seen, and also the first official aerial that Hasbro have ever put out. I can't remember there ever being another version of this specific character. Of course, they've made so many Alita ones over the past couple of years, but yeah, this might just be a first for aerial. Now, in terms of the detail, very nicely done. Do you know she isn't as retooled as Dion so basically it's just the head the hands the blaster and the front of the bike which now becomes the backpack for the robot mode which have been changed besides that the color scheme does do a lot of the heavy lifting and damn is she pink wow she's quite literally a Cybertronian Barbie if Barbie was to be zapped by the all spark back in the 80s I'm almost certain this is exactly what she would have looked like but that is such a nicely done looking head sculpt literally spot on to the war dawn episode and I think it's a first to ever have ponytail articulation it can actually be swayed left to right which is nuts but 
yeah, pretty cool looking figure. Love the hand sculpt, 100 times better than just the circular port of Legacy RC, and that is a really nicely done looking blaster. It is just a shame they didn't take it the extra mile and slightly retool these wheels to either be placed on the back or maybe just get rid of them completely. But yeah, overall, not a bad looking figure, and surprisingly, she has no QC issues at all, unlike what we saw from Dion. And I won't bore you guys with the articulation because, much like Dion, you guys have seen this mold over and over and over again. So let's just jump into a few comparisons. So first up, here we have Dion and Orion Pax. This is the version that came in the A Hero Is Born set. So yeah, these guys really are the perfect companion pieces. And just between these two figures alone, never mind Cup, there is a lot which is different between the two molds. So that's kind of cool. As we turn them here from the sides, you can see the differences between the chest and in particular would be the back. I mean, it is basically completely different as far as I can tell. So... Yeah, that's definitely pretty nice, and I do think using the same base body for these guys in bot mode was the right choice, because they were very similarly designed in the episode, so... Yeah, that's kind of cool. Here we have Ariel alongside her mold mate, that of course being the notorious Legacy Prime Universe RC. So, like I said beforehand, not too much has changed in terms of the base mold. It's literally just the heads, the hands, and the backpacks, which we'll see more of later on in vehicle mode. But yeah, very nice read color. Like I said beforehand, the colors do a lot of the heavy lifting in truly making this into an Ariel figure. And out of the two, hands down, I do think this is the better looking character. Uh, much like we did for Orion Pax and Optimus Prime in the previous review, here we have Ariel alongside her future counterpart, that being Alita 1. And, you know, the design similarities are definitely vague, but I guess you could kind of tell they are evolutions of the same character, so... Yeah, I just thought this would be kind of cool to compare them. Of course, she transforms into a bike, and this one is kind of a strange, almost cupcake-looking car, but... Yeah, they don't look too bad next to each other. And getting the whole squad together, here we have the War Dawn lineup so far. Ariel, Orion Pax, Dion, Alpha Trion. I guess now we just need a few Ariel bots sprinkled around in the background, and this would be pretty much picture perfect. So definitely I'm hoping there are combiners for Legacy Year 3. So I believe that pretty much just wraps it up completely for these two in their robot modes. I won't bore you guys with the ins and outs of the transformation as yet again I've shown it off so many times over here on the channel. All I will do is very briefly touch base with Dion's backpack when I get him into vehicle mode because there is just one slight difference in terms of the transformation. But besides that it's identical. So transform and roll out! Catch me if I fall. We're going to kickstart things off again by checking out Dion. Now, as you guys may have been able to tell from that transformation sequence, you do not have to remove these back pieces in order to transform him. It reminds me a lot of the Earthrise Trailbreaker where he had that whole kind of backpack which was detachable, but you didn't need to remove it in order to transform him. So I do like that aspect. I mean, you could remove them if you wanted to make things slightly easier for yourself, but they do specifically tab into two slots here on the back of the truck, which is kind of cool. And in terms of accuracy, I mean, from the front, it looks okay, but I think in the episode, he had like like a whole trailer so if they really wanted to nail that look they definitely have to give us a voyager or maybe even a leader and i just don't think this would be the right character to give that treatment to but yeah, i do like the way this whole windscreen looks for a comparison here we have him alongside orion pax so you can see the biggest difference this time around is that backpack now becoming kind of the hood section of the vehicle mode and the chest now becoming the windscreen of the vehicle besides that and of course the back they are pretty much identical in terms of molds and then taking a very quick look here at Ariel, in terms of her bike mode, you know, the transformation is spot on to the previous versions of the mold, but she does have a complete modified windscreen, which looks way more striking, kind of reminds me of something from Tron Legacy, and a little more Cybertronian looking, as you'd expect, because she is on Cybertron at this point. But besides that, exactly the same to the Legacy RC bike, which I will bring out for a comparison. So here it is. As you guys can see, it literally is just the colors and the front of the bike which are different. Besides that, she is exactly the same. So, 
Which out of the two do you guys prefer? I think in bike mode, I may have to give it here to the Legacy RC, but in terms of robot mode, definitely Cybertronian Aerial for me. And so, wrapping up on this review for the Transformers Legacy War Dawn 2-pack. In terms of a recommendation, to tell the truth guys, it's really going to come down to your fondness of the episode and your fondness for the moulds and the characters. Personally, if you're not too keen on Ariel nor Dion, then I think this is an easy miss because you really aren't missing out on much. I mean, Dion is a cool read sort of Cup and Orion packs, but if you own any of those previous moulds, you're going to know exactly what to expect here from this guy, and I am not the biggest fan of his head sculpt. And to be fair, the same goes for Ariel the only advantage she has is that we haven't really ever got a version of this character I don't think officially by Hasbro but again it's based on kind of a mid mold that being the Legacy RC so unless you are a die hard completionist I do think you can give this set a pass especially for the price tag of £65 which is kind of ridiculous for two deluxe class figures but then in the same vein I guess it is a nice companion piece to go alongside the A Hero Is Born set so it really is just going to come down to your guys passion of the episode of these characters I'd love to get your thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you guys think of these two? And until my next video, I'll see you then. Thanks for watching.